Great, so welcome back to grade eight math. We are now looking at reflections. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to do a little bit of review from grade seven, just in terms of how to reflect. And then we'll be looking at some rules in terms of how to make it easier without even graphing it. So the first thing we'll look at is just plotting these triangles or this triangle. So K is negative three, negative one. So let's just put that uh, point here. Um, L is zero, four, so that's up here. And M is at five, two. So that's here. And let me just join these together with some lines. Great, so what we're looking at is a reflection across the x-axis. So let me just put in the x-axis in here, the y-axis, whoops, and the y-axis is up there. And so what, we're, what this means is that we're going to use this as a mirror and that everything along this line is going to be reflected. Well, let's just use, chain it to line here. Everything along this line will be reflected to the other side of this line. And as we know about reflections, there's two rules. Number one, that the angle of the object to the mirror has to be the same as the angle from the... Um, mirror to the image. So in this case, it's 90 degrees. And so the image would be 90 degrees from the mirror. The second rule is that the number of blocks or the distance from the object to the mirror is the same as the distance or the number of blocks from the mirror to the image. So in this case, if we look at K, K is one block away from this mirror at a 90 degree angle. That means that K prime will also be one degree, sorry, one block away at a 90 degree angle on the other side of the mirror. Just like when you look at yourself in the mirror, it's the same distance away from you and it's at a 90 degree angle. So if you were to hold a ruler up to the mirror, uh, it would create a 90 degree angle and at the same distance. So L right now is on the back of the mirror. So reflected to the front of the mirror, it's four blocks away. So it will also stay four blocks away. That's L prime. M is two blocks away from this mirror. So M prime will be two blocks away from that mirror, the image. So I just connect these three points together. And so I have a kind of cool looking image here because I have some overlapping sections. It's is slightly different from real life where you have an object on both sides of the mirror being reflected to the other side. So let's just name the coordinates of the image points. So in this case, we have a K prime will be at negative uh, three, one. And then I have L prime is at zero negative four and m prime is at five negative two so let's compare these with the first original points and let's see how negative three negative one changes to negative three one zero four changes to zero negative four and five two uh, reflects to five negative two so if you see a pattern here that means that all x y values with a reflection across the x axis what happens is that the x coordinate stays the same. The reason is because the x co x axis is the mirror. It fixes or it keeps the same or keeps constant the x coordinate. So the x coordinate will actually stay the same. The what will change is the reflection is that the y coordinate is no longer y but it'll be negative y. It's on the opposite side of the mirror. So for every x y that means the x will stay the same. So negative three stays negative three, but the y will flip. So for example, if I just take any random point like negative 152 and a reflection across the x axis, the x coordinate stays the same. So that becomes negative 100 stays the same. The other sign, so the, the other coordinate, which is the y coordinate, will change signs. So it started at 52. That means the new coordinate will be at negative 52. If it started at negative 52, then it changes signs and it becomes positive 52. So this rule just means that the x stays the same and the y flips to the other side. Now let's see what happens if we reflect across the y axis. So let's start with our original points again. So this was at negative 3, negative 1, 0, 4, four and at five two so this is k l and m this is my original points these are my original points here and let me just connect these to make a triangle and then what i'm going to do is instead of reflecting across the x-axis i'm now going to reflect across the y-axis and so that's the vertical 
axis here. So let me just draw that in. So that means all the points that are away from this are going to be the same distance away. So let's just see, let's look at K first. And so now if I make a 90 degree angle from K to the mirror, I see that this is three blocks. So that means on the other side, I'll be three blocks away. So K prime will be over here. L is kind of interesting because it's on the mirror itself. So if something is directly on the mirror, it reflects right on itself. So that means L prime is in exactly the same place as L was. M is on the back side of the mirror, or what, at quadrant one. And so that is five blocks away. So it's going to continue 90 degrees on the other side, five blocks away. And so this will be M prime on the back side of the mirror. So if I connect these uh, three points again. So it makes a neat little diagram, neat little image here. And so let's write out the coordinates for this one. So in this case, K prime is now at a three negative one. L prime is still at zero four. And M prime is now at negative five two. So now let's compare these to the first example again, and you can see a pattern or how, how it's going to compare to the other one. That means for every X y coordinate again and this time with a reflection across the y axis what happens is the y mirror fixes or keeps constant the y coordinate so that means the negative one will stay at negative one because that's the y coordinate part of it that's kind of the part that's facing the mirror but it's the negative three that told me how far away from the mirror so that flips to the other side so the x coordinate changes sign so if it was positive whoops if it was positive it becomes negative and if it's negative it becomes positive so it will become negative x Sorry, that should be a negative there, so let's just erase that. So this will become negative x, and the y stays constant. So now if I take my original kind of practice point here of negative 152 and a reflection across the y-axis, what will happen is that the x-coordinate, whatever the x is, will change sign. So that was at negative 100, so that means that will change to positive 100, and the y-coordinate will, will stay the same, so it was 52, will become 52. So what I suggest you do, if you're not sure of the rules, then just try any point. If I, if I wanted to try some point and flip it across one of the axes, find out how does that point change, and then I can use, I can find the rule and then apply that to uh, any possible coordinates. So on the test, you'll be given coordinates that are quite difficult to draw because they'll kind of be far away from the axes, but using the rules or using a little bit of imagination in terms of how it would flip, you could predict then the coordinates of the image. Great, so we'll do a couple more examples in class and we'll look at two more axes. We'll look at the x equals y axis and then the x equals negative y axis. So hopefully you understood this lesson. Great, so welcome back to grade eight math. We're continuing on 7.3a, which is on reflections. Now in the last lesson, we looked at the x axis and y axis, uh, and we looked at the different rules. And there's two more axes that we're gonna look at. And the first one right now is called the x equals y axis, which means this is the diagonal line that passes through the points zero, zero, and one, one. What that also means is that for every x value, it's equal to the y value. So that means for every point that, uh, where the x coordinate is a certain number, then the y coordinate will be the same number, and that will be the mirror. So for example, zero, zero, one, one, also two, 2 for an x coordinate 3 will be also y coordinate 3 so where every x value is the same as the y value so 0 0 1 1 2 3 3 3 4 4 5 5 6 6 and then negative 1 negative 1 negative 2 negative 2 negative 3 negative 3 etc etc so which means this is basically this diagonal line so I'll just draw this diagonal line in red uh, so this is now our new axis of reflection. So this is kind of weird because when we draw our points, we just need to kind of look at what where these points are going to be. So let's start with this first point here at negative 2, 3. So let's plot that here at negative 2, 3, and we'll call that letter A. And letter B is that, I'll just change my color to, oh no, I'll keep it as red, as uh, negative 4, negative 1. So we'll put uh, point B there. So what we're going to do is let's just review the rules of reflection. So the angle that the object makes with the mirror at for its reflection is has to be 90 degrees. And the second thing is that the distance 
from the object to the mirror will be the same as from the mirror to the image. So those are the two rules. So let's start with this first rule um, and let's figure out then a 90 degree angle from A to the mirror. Well, if I look from A this way, if I do this, that doesn't make a 90 degree angle. If I go this way, Again, that's not a 90 degree, 90 degree angle. So I have to make a 90 degree angle, which means I have to also move diagonally to this mirror. And so the angle that this makes is 90 degrees. Now, the second part of reflection is that the distance from the object to the mirror is the same as the distance from the mirror to the image. So let's count the number of blocks. Well, I have one diagonal block two diagonal blocks, and then half of a diagonal block here. So that means I have to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Well, I have this half one, and now I have to go two more diagonal blocks to get to here. So this is now point B. Oh, sorry, not point B, but point A prime. So let's just review a little bit. This makes a 90 degree angle, and also this distance from A to the mirror is the same as a prime to the mirror. Also, I can check using folding. So I can either fold this paper along this line to see if a matches with a prime. I can also use a transparent mirror to see whether or not the, um, the image ends up in the, in the predicted spot. Now for letter B, again, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to draw a line to the mirror at a 90 degree angle. Let's use purple. And if I count the number of blocks, this is one complete diagonal block and then half of a diagonal block. And I continue that line for one and a half on the other side. And so then this point now becomes B prime. So let me just put these two points here. Again, I show a 90 degree angle and I show the equal distances on both sides of the mirror. So let's look at the coordinates. A prime is now, if I look at the coordinate system, it's at three negative two, and B prime is at negative one, negative four. So let's just compare these and see what happened. Well, I started with negative two, three, and now I become, now it becomes three, negative two, and this one was negative four, negative one, and it became in B prime, negative one, negative four. So if you notice something, the signs actually negative two stays negative two, but what happened was that they changed places. So that means for any value x, y, other uh, for a, a, under a reflection of x equals y on the x equals y axis, what basically happens is that the y coordinate becomes the x coordinate and then the x coordinate becomes the y coordinate. So they just switch places. So that for any reflection along the x equals y axis, which is the diagonal line in the positive direction of uh, quadrant one and quadrant three, all you need to do is the coordinates change places. So now we're gonna look at the x equals negative y axis. So now we're looking at the x equals negative y axis. So we're just continuing on on reflections again. And now the x equals negative y means that for every x value, it's the negative y value. So zero, zero still is the same. But then uh, for the value one, x value one, that means the y value will be negative one instead of one. For two, it'll be negative two. So it'll be three, negative three, four, negative four, five, negative five, etc. So I'm just going to draw this axis so it's basically the diagonal axis moving in the negative direction, which means flowing downwards. And so this is now the mirror for this example. So I have triangle KLM and I want to reflect this across the X equals negative Y axis, write the coordinates of the image below. So just like in the other, um, in the X equals Y axis, the distance has to be, or sorry, the angle has to be at 90 degrees and it has to be diagonally. So this is two blocks away. So that means now I can actually try to do this in my head. So I won't be drawing this because it's going to complicate our image a little bit. So I'll just change it to blue. So in my head, I can see two diagonal blocks from L to the mirror. That means L prime will be two diagonal blocks on the other side of the mirror. K, if I look here, is two diagonal blocks to this mirror. I'll continue two diagonal blocks. That means K prime will be on this side of the mirror. And M 
is a little bit tricky, but it is one diagonal block, two diagonal blocks, three diagonal blocks, and a half. So I have my half, and then I have my one, two, three, and it ends up down here. This is a really tricky one. The x equals y and the x equals negative y axes are really tricky to do the reflections. However, once you join the points, notice that the image, if I were to take my piece of paper and fold it or use a transparent mirror, the image would overlay the object in this case. So now I can look at the points again. So k prime in this case is at 1, 3. L prime is at negative 4, 0. And M prime and m prime is at negative 2, negative 5. Now, just for the sake of comparison, let's just write the original k, l, and m, just so we can see how they move. The original k was at negative 3, negative 1. l was at 0, 4. And m was at 5, 2. So how did each of these move? So let's find the general rule again for every x or y value under a reflection under x equals negative y. Woo. Let's look what happens. Well, it looks like the coordinates change place again. However, also the coordinates change signs. So that means x, y change place and both change signs. So this becomes negative y, negative x which just means that x's and y's, whatever the original sign was, will change its sign so it will become its opposite, and they also switch places. So this is a really tricky one. So what we're going to do is just let's, on the side here, let's just review all four of the reflections that we learned. So for an x equals y, so for all x equals y, let's do all four. A reflection on the x-axis makes it fixes the x and changes the y. A reflection on the y-axis fixes the y and changes the x. A reflection on the x equal y-axis, what that does is just changes place. So they, change, they just swap positions. And then lastly, the x equals negative y. They switch places and they switch signs. So here are your first four rules for the reflections. So review them. If you can't remember the rules, you can always just choose a point such as 0, 2 or 1, 2. Preferably don't choose anything that's on an axis because it's a little bit difficult. Or don't choose something where the numbers are the same, like 1, 1, because then it's hard to see whether or not they switched places. So choose an example like 1, 2 or 1, 3 or 2, 3, uh, and then reflect it and then see how the signs change and the positioning changes. And then you can come up with the rule as well. But if you can try to remember these rules and just review them, then it becomes easier to predict for any point that you're going to be given. So review this lesson and hopefully you understood it.